Welcome back, everyone, to the smartest year ever, our quest to become the world's greatest conversationalist. My name is Gordy, and I was just wondering, could the lobsters in the Titanic's kitchen have survived the sinking? Give me five minutes, and I bet you can use this in conversation today. Also, like and subscribe if you haven't, so you can keep up. I do this every single day. First off, lobster was on the menu. First class passengers aboard the Titanic dined on poached eggs with grilled mutton, cold asparagus salad, and indeed, lobster a la American. And when the ship hit the iceberg, some people on the internet like to joke that the luckiest creatures on board were the lobsters in the kitchen tanks because they were freed from their steamy fate and given a new life on the ocean floor. But is there any truth to that? Could the Titanic's lobsters have actually survived the sinking? Let's break it down. All right, and here's the first issue. Depth and pressure. The Titanic rests at, at a depth of about 12,500 feet, roughly 3,800 meters. And that's over 380 times the atmospheric pressure that we feel at sea level. And there's a problem there. Uh, American lobsters, the species most likely on board, typically live in water no deeper than 500 meters. Even the deepest dwelling lobster species max out at around 2,000 meters, and that's barely halfway to the Titanic. At 3,800 meters, the water pressure is high enough to crush submarines, let alone a crustacean designed for much shallower depths. So the verdict there is that the lobster was probably crushed like a fortune cookie in your back pocket. The second issue is temperature shock. The ocean at Titanic's depth sits just above freezing 1 to 2 degrees Celsius, like 33 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. American lobsters can tolerate cold water, but not like that cold. Even if they weren't instantly crushed, that temperature shock alone would probably kill them. Verdict there, not good. Doomed, I would say. <laughs> Frostbitten and doomed. Uh, the third issue, uh, the escape conditions themselves. Like It's plausible that the tanks cracked open during the sinking or releasing the lobsters, but that would have happened fast. Like, the Titanic sank in under three hours as water rushed in and pressure increased. Uh, these lobsters would have been flushed downward violently and rapidly. They didn't, they didn't put like little rubber bands on their claws back then, I learned. Uh, but they did wedge little pieces of wood into the in into their claws to keep the claws from opening, uh, and so that's another issue too. If you think about that, like that's tough. Um, so yeah, that was like just like a pressurized elevator to hell. <laughs> that would be my verdict there. Free, uh, but free fall into a terrible fate. <laughs> um, four, my fourth issue would be the barrow trauma. Marine creatures are incredibly sensitive to rapid pressure changes. Uh, that's why fish hauled up from deep water sometimes like implode or, or bloat grotesquely. If you've ever seen uh, blobfish, like you've seen the pictures of blobfish, I'll put one up, blobfish. But that's like really a blobfish at without its normal pressure on them. They don't really look so weird like that all the time underwater. This is what they look like underwater. Right? The lobsters, though dropping into deep sea pressure at rapid speed, would have zero ability to regulate their buoyancy or internal pressure. Uh, so even if they could withstand the depth and pressure we addressed in, in point one, the sudden changes would just be brutal. Again, verdict, not good there. I'm imploded, crushed, inside out, I don't even know, inverted, not good. And lastly, we're going to talk about the life, their life at, at the bottom there. Um, so let's pretend that, that one a lobster somehow did make it down there. So could it have, it have lived? Maybe, like for a second. There's not much oxygen at that depth. And, and in, in 1912, the Titanic wreck wasn't a rich coral reef. It was just cold debris and, and lobsters are scavengers, right? Uh, but, but they even need a, an environment. They need oxygen, food uh, to, to have a survivable environment. So the verdict there, not a chance. So Final verdict overall, no, the Titanic lobsters didn't live to tell the tale. They didn't start a brave new crustacean colony on the sea floor, and they definitely didn't live for 112 years waiting to be found by a submarine. Because a fun fact, though, lobsters can live 
for over 100 years in theory. They don't like die of old age in the traditional sense, but even the hardiest of lobsters, uh, they can't really handle pressure like that. They weren't equipped for that one-way plunge into icy darkness. So, yeah. Next time someone says the lobsters on the Titanic had the best day of their lives, you can you can gently correct them. And that's my goal today. They did. They probably did have a slightly better day than getting boiled alive, but but not by much. It's really just a matter of preference. Like, would you would you rather be boiled alive or crushed by extreme pressure? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> you tell me. Uh, so there you have it. A viral meme meets a brutal death at the hands of marine biology. Titanic's lobsters didn't escape. They plummeted into a cold, crushing void. Go check out all my sources, which can be found in the YouTube description. Give me a rate, like, subscribe, a comment, share this with someone who likes this sort of thing, and check out the one-minute version, which you can find everywhere on social media, at Smartest Year Ever. And in the meantime, stay curious and stay clever on our quest to become the world's greatest conversationalists. I will see you tomorrow in the smartest year ever.